What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, let's continue our discussion about collaboration. So this time, we're going to learn how to use work sharing in, in, in a project workflow. Okay, so we will be learning how to work in work shared projects and we will be learning how to use work sharing features. Okay, so to enable work sharing, so you need to go to the collaborate tab. Okay, and then you see here on the Manage Collaboration panel, you can see Collaborate. Okay, so I'm going to select Collaborate here. So let's click that one. And then there's a dialog box, Collaborate. So you have two options to enable the collaboration. So by the way, the reason why we are enabling uh, collaboration or work sharing is that this will allow multiple people to work on the same Revit model simultaneously. So this is very useful if you have a big project that requires uh, multiple users to work on that simultaneously. But if you are the only one who will be using or who will be doing the project, so you have an option. So it's either you enable the work sharing or uh, don't enable the work sharing. Okay, so it's up to you. But if it is a multiple people project base, Revit model, so you need to enable the work sharing. Okay, so you have two options here. So we have within your network and then the other one in the cloud. So for this exercise, we'll be using within your network. So we are not going to save this project to the cloud in Autodesk Construction Cloud, but we are just going to save it, let's say, for example, as a LAN or one. Okay, LAN stands for Local Area Network. Uh, one is wide area network. So collaborate on a LAN or one. So the model will be converted to work shared central model. So I'm going to select your OK. All right. And then after that, when enabling work sharing, so Revit creates two default work sets. Work sets is this one here creates work sets and add elements to them so just click that one and then it will open up the work sets dialog box so all the levels and grids are added to this work set here shared levels and grid okay so all the levels and grids will be automatically added to this work set or layers if you are familiar in AutoCAD okay and everything else is added here on our work set number one or layer work set number one. Okay, so I'm talking about the, this feature in AutoCAD that is called layer. So it's the same idea as the work sets. So just like this one, your active work set here. So if your active work set is work set number one, all elements that you will be creating will be placed under the work set number one work set. Okay. So that's why you always make sure that you are selecting the correct work set. So of course, you can cre create multiple work sets if you want. Like for example, work set for ducting, work set for pipes, work set for mechanical equipment, etc., etc. So the point here is make sure you are using the correct work set. Okay, the active work set. Okay, so I'll just select here. Okay, here. So after enabling the work sharing, the central model needs to be created. Okay, so we need to create the central model. Alright, so in our quick access toolbar, I'm going to select save here. Okay, so click the save. And then as you can see here, a save file as central model dialog appears. Since this is the first time the project is being saved since work sharing is enabled. So I'm just going to select here, yes, to save this file as a central model. Okay. So I'll just name it uh, work sharing. So let us just wait while it is uh, saving. All right. Okay. So it's now saved here. So you have the options here. So you have synchronize and modify settings. And then you also have here... Uh, synchronize now okay so what I'm gonna do since this is our central model now so this is the central model so good practice we don't work directly to our central model so what we do is we create 
new local from the central model. Okay? So that's why I'm going to close this one. So this is our central model. So I'm going to close that one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new local. Okay? So to do that, I'll select here open. And this is our central file. So you see there's an option here, create new local. Okay, so this will create a new local model from the central model. So I'll just select here, OK, or open. So it will create a new local from the central model. When the local model is created, so you can see here, the username will be appended to the file name. Okay, so the local model will also be saved in the location specified in our options dialog okay so it's up to you where you want to save your local so usually this is saved to your my documents to your documents folder the local file okay so just remember every time you create a local file or the first time you create a local file your username okay like this one this is my username right so the username will be appended to the file name Okay, and then after changes have been made in our local copy, so let's say you already work on to this project, you add some models like dock or pipe or air terminals or whatever it is, whatever element. So after changes have been made on our local model, they need to be transferred to the central model. Okay, so this is accomplished by synchronizing with central. So here on our options bar, so this is what I'm talking about. So you have synchronize and modify settings. And then the other one is uh, synchronize now. Okay, so this is what you do after changes have been made in our local model. So they need to be transferred to the central model. And this is accomplished by synchronizing with central using this two options here. You can actually find it here as well on the Collaborate tab. You can see here, so you have Synchronize with Central. Okay, so you have here Synchronize and Modify Settings and Synchronize Now, which is also these two options here. Okay. Right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select Synchronize and Modify Settings. So let's click this one and then you see the dialog box here. Okay, so in our Synchronize with Central dialog, so we can select the available checkboxes after synchronizing relinquish the following work sets and element. Okay, here, this one. So we can select these boxes here that is available on after synchronizing relinquish the following work sets and elements. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to relinquish the user created work sets. The reason why I'm checking this one, so let's say, for example, I created elements on my model here. I added some pipe and ducts under the work set number one. So if I want my other team members to work on that work set on my work set number one and all the elements created under that work set, they'll be able to do so because I have checked here user created work sets because I want that to be relinquished. But if you do not want others to touch your work sets, the work sets that you have created and the elements under those work sets that you created, you just simply uncheck this one. So meaning to say you are not relinquishing that. You are just synchronizing the changes to the central model, but you are not synchronizing. Oh, I mean, you are not relinquishing it. Okay, but if you want to share that, relinquish it. Okay, you just check that one and then you can select here. Okay. Okay. So what will happen is this will synchronize changes from the local model and relinquish the elements and work sets. Okay. So aside from that, aside from synchronize with central, you also have option here, reload latest. Okay. So reload latest can be used to load changes from other users in the local model without publishing any changes. Okay, and then the other one here, relinquish all mine will relinquish borrowed elements that have not been modified. Okay, so that's why these three tools here are uh, very useful. 
okay and aside from that if you look here below so there's an option here work sharing display so work sharing display modes can be used to visualize various work sharing conditions okay so uh, this is our control bar by the way you call this control bar this area here okay so you call this control bar so you can click work sharing display so it will open up so you can let's say you can select your work sets if you want okay you see there's a color on the work sets of my uh, work set number one so how to change that color so how to control that so you can click that button okay and then i can select here work sharing display settings so let's click that one all right so if you are working on a work sets because you also have other tabs here like checkout status owners model updates or work sets so if you have several work sets so you'll be able to see it here and then you'll be able to change the color so you also have an option here if you want to show the color or not okay so if i select here let's say i'll change the color of my work set one so i change that to green for example i'll select here okay and then okay and it will turn to green like that okay so the elements in the model will be color coded according to the work set they belong to okay and then yeah as you can see every time you hover your pointer to an element so there is an additional information such as who created the original element all right right so basically this is the basic of your work sharing collaboration using uh, work sharing or work sets all right so hopefully you learned something from this video if you have any comments questions or suggestions you can put it on the comment section below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can thank you for watching have a nice day